Good morning, everyone. Well, today we have the first big rain. It's actually going to rain for a few days since Justin installed the foundation area vent walls on the back of the house. There were two crawl space vents that were the soil and the grass and the weeds were just going up. And it could be the culprit for getting all of that water into the house uh, that we had last week. They're galvanized metal uh, half moons and you push back the soil and you put them around to protect the vents in your foundation. Justin has just installed a, what do you call these things? A vent guard. A vent guard, yeah. Water guard, water barrier. We think maybe these two vents were the culprit in getting so much water under the house. So he has pulled back these wood chips and weeds and he is now putting the second one in. I don't know why, but they put these flush to the bottom here. Oh, you dug them lower. Yeah, so any water that, that was coming in, right? Yeah. They just covered those bricks with this. So they literally made... A chute. A chute. For the water, for water to go, to go in. in there. <laughs> Okay, because it doesn't matter what it is, right? Because the water's not going to go down there. Yeah, water's not going to go down there. You're going to get rainwater in there a little bit, but not enough to. Right. Well, what keeps it from soaking in underneath this this thing and going underneath it? Going underneath where? Underneath this? Mm-hmm. It'll just soak in before it does that. Yeah, yeah. This is so. What these are for is to block the water on the surface mainly. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and any water that goes underground. Well, this is a vast improvement, so thank you. Yeah, these are going to make a, a huge difference on, it's going to keep the water out of there. I'm actually hoping that that was the culprit and there's not another culprit. We're going to check back later and see if there's water under the house. So right now we have a little bit of a lull in the rain but it has been gently raining. And so I, as you can see, I had all of my plants out last night. I wanted them to get a good drink, especially all of these, these trays of brassicas and lettuces and all of that needed to have been planted a month ago. But I kept uh, hearing about a frost warning and I was concerned and this is the first time I've ever dealt with frost. I know that the shallots and the onions actually get sweeter if they go through a frost so I've left them out for a while. But I've got everything out here, the radishes, the daikon radish, more lettuces, uh, celery, the brassicas, kale, there's supposed to be a Brussels sprouts in there somewhere. They're huge now. I mean, <laughs> these plants should have been planted a long time ago. But I just said I wasn't going to plant them out until I had protection. I got fruit trees. The elderberry looks fantastic. I wanted them all to experience this weather because I hope to get them planted out very soon. So I'm gonna stop carrying them in and out of the garage at night. We've been working on protection for the strawberries, as you've seen in the videos. We're doing frames with bird netting because strawberries, the only thing I have to protect them from are possibly deer, uh, if they came up that close to the house, and birds. So. I've got bird netting. They're going to be hinged. I took the idea. Whoops. <laughs> They're going to be hinged like this. Don't help me. I'm not. <laughs> I saw your in, I wanted to, your but in flat, your yeah, I, I caught flexed myself. Your muscle. I mean, yeah. How hard is that? It's not hard, and but we do need the stick. You want, it does you want wanna, that there? It does okay. want to come in. It does, yeah. When we were young, my mother built us she was a carpenter, she made sculptures, she made all our clothes, she did everything, everything. She made a train table. It was a train table, a, a four by eight sheet of plywood on four by fours with a whole uh, shelf underneath for stuff. And we had all of our Model O, I think it was the Model O, was that 
that high. We had that whole train set up on there and she built this cage, this wire cage with one by twos that had hinges. Uh, they were a foot tall to, to clear any stuff on the train table. They were a foot tall and I just thought of it the other day when he was doing this. We were trying to figure out because I'm going to have the deer, deer friends around. How are we going to hinge this so we can open this stuff? Where is this going to go when you do hinge it? Or do you pick it up, set it aside? But there's no space because I'm going to have a deer fence. So I said, wait a minute. My mother had this thing on top of a four by eight. So these are four by sixes two four by sixes because they're six by eight and these two panels are going to be hinged in the middle just like my mother's the top of my mother's train cage so the top was just two pieces hinged together we would pull it over of course that was wire mesh so it was much heavier but we would pull it over and set that whole thing off together the four by fours would go underneath on the underneath shelf and then the sides had the little hooks like you had on your back door screen door back in the day <laughs> and you just unhook the four corners and drop these things down and then you could have complete access to this train and nothing would ever fall on the train and break it or knock things over or anything it was genius you know she was a genius so I thought I'm gonna do that here so <laughs> he's trying to get some appropriate hinges and we're working on that here we are in the backyard and look at this grass Obviously, I am going to have to get it mowed. And I put in a message to my guy, but that hasn't happened yet. The well in there is probably a good six or eight inches below the lowest rung of this, of this vent, which has, ooh, I don't want to stick my finger in there. It could be a spider. So this looks fantastic. I mean, there's actually bricks underneath that. So I really don't see how water could rush in there. Same thing here. So fingers crossed. Now look at all these weeds. Oh my goodness. I am going to have such a job on my hands. You can see my wood. <laughs> now I had this crazy idea. I had two trees cut down and this is going to bless me with firewood all next winter. I wanted to cover this up so it didn't get wet but that didn't happen. I told him to leave me a totem and I was going to have a carver come and carve these two 10 or 12 foot totems so that I would have some beautiful Native American carving right to look out right out my window or if I'm sitting down here on the porch. It was pointed out to me that because the roots are still in the ground that it would just rot and I'd be wasting all that money. This is an ash tree so this is all ash which I understand is a good firewood. What is that sound? Is that a dog? sound like a dog. And then that tree over there is a shag bark hickory. And you can see there's a smaller pile of wood over by the shop. To figure out the best way to excavate this, to direct the water away from the house, I haven't figured that out yet. And maybe I need to talk to more experts. I don't know. But I am hoping that we learn a little something today. So let's check back in later and see if there's water under the house. You know, I never really imagined I would be here or any place like this and be able to experience nature <laughs> as challenging as it can be, you know, like with snakes or ticks. I had two ticks on me last week when I had to go to the urgent care because it was in <laughs> A spot I couldn't reach and the other was on my leg. If you follow my channel you know I love nature, you know I love trees. It was very hard to, for me to see these trees being cut down. But just like if you are a meat eater and you're growing meat animals for food and sustenance, 
this tree is going to provide heat and warmth for me next year. And if my power goes out, <laughs> it's going to really be a necessity. So I am happy that I have my own firewood and I have a lot of firewood up here that I can that I can forage. So that hasn't happened yet. Just too much to do. <laughs> you know, when I came, this was just empty back here and I didn't know there were plants planted here, but look, I believe these are all hostas coming up. So that's going to be nice. And they're planted right by the house, so maybe the deer will leave them alone. This is my original second chip drop and it's really broken down and half of it got moved over and all of this needs to be cleaned up. I mean you couldn't see this at all when I came here so I had no idea. Here are the beautiful raised beds and after two rains the soil which was topped off is only down about an inch, inch and a half. The screens are going to go like this. They're going to fold back and lay over. The hinge is going to allow them to lay over. And then I can harvest and then close it back up. This is bird netting, but I wound up having him use the bird netting that came as deer fencing because, see, we really need the hinge because it's kind of a pain otherwise. And I don't want to ruin the, the deer netting. I mean, I have four, need hinges here, and then they ran out of wood. The cedar one buys at Home Depot, so we're waiting for that. You notice I put the trays with the most tender plants kind of protected inside this fence of larger pots, except for that one, and kind of hoping that deer don't like spinach. I really have to get these cannas planted. Here are the potatoes. They, the sides are rolled up all the way, so they are just looking fantastic. And here are the trays of peas, and it doesn't really look like soaking the peas sped up the germination process because this was the first day, these two were the first day, and this was two days later few coming up here, right there. I don't see anything in here yet. Okay. We got started on our walking trail. Daryl came over the other day. I found this little arrow in there somewhere and so that's tells me where it starts and this is actually privet I think but I think I'm gonna leave this you come in this way we got a really curvy tree right here to kind of show us where the entrance is basically we went about hmm maybe half the length of the football field and Justin is here. He went through and cut with Sawzall all the big branches and we marked everything on the right side so we know how to get in there. Finally, I, I raked it and so it's going to be really awesome and you'll get to see it when it's not raining. <laughs> Hello Justin, good morning. Hi, good morning. I didn't expect you today. I didn't expect me either. What are you doing? You didn't expect you. What are you doing here today? Uh, so I wanted to get out here this morning to Take care of the drip and the cistern, the, the back uh, wash coming off that pipe. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna pro probably finish the, the hole. 
Okay. The bottom of the cistern, get that pipe in there capped off. Great. And then I gotta, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, connect the sump pump wires and get those heat shrinked and all that stuff so they're completely waterproof. Um, and then that'll be that'll be done. That's Good. my plan to get all that done this morning. Well, I said it's flowing right now. Flowing? Flowing, yeah. This must have quite a bit of water in it. Yep. Could you possibly slide that aside? I know it's really, really heavy. It just fall in. Oh, it's not. Okay. Yeah, we're good. Oh, wow. So I need to take them leaves out of there. Oh. I need to clean that whole thing out. I'll just get that little rake and rake them out of there. Okay. So, in other words, the, all of the pipes come down. And that. There's one here. There's one over here. And, uh, and then it just goes out in this corner somehow. Yeah, the pipes. Yeah, that's the six inch pipe, right? That's correct. Okay, cool. How deep is that thing? This right here? Uh -huh. Not very deep at all. Okay, because this concrete on top looks so old. Do you think it could have originally been a well? And then they just, no. No, I feel like, no, this was definitely all built for that the cistern and okay yeah. yep. all right you want to take a peek under the house yeah okay thank you i won't ask you to do that again no it's not actually it's not that heavy it's heavy but it's not that heavy well you're probably not even supposed to leave it sideways like that but it's yeah because you want to keep everything out of there you don't want animals crawling up in there no but they'll come out when it rains. You got a flashlight? Oh, you got a light under there. That's right, I forgot. No water. Really? Let's see. Ooh, the plastic's even dry. Yeah, there's no water. The fix outside on those vents is I that's what the water that's where the water was coming in at. I mean, we, sure. we didn't see it happen, so we don't know for sure, but because it's not happening now, if it really comes a gully washer, it's going to rain for three, four days, mm -hmm. so we should check in four days. Yes. And um, is that the new sump pump down there? That is. That thing? Yep. Is it just going to sit there with the wires like that? or, or Nope. You have to hook it up. Yeah, I'll hook it up. Thank you so much for watching this channel, liking the videos, and especially sharing them. And if you are trying to do this homesteading thing or starting over in your life, I hope I can be an inspiration to you. And I hope you'll hit that bell for notifications, scroll down and click all, so you won't miss anything right here on my new Tennessee homestead.